The shallow sliver of water caught between Sulawesi and the small island of Lembe is the Lembe Strait, muck diving centre of the world and a mecca for underwater macro photographers. This map shows just a few of the recognised dive sites, but to be honest, it is one great big dive location. Pick a spot, go down to anything from 5 to 25 metres, and you'll be greeted by an astonishing world of remarkable creatures. An experienced dive guide is essential, so we teamed up with John of Two Fish Divers, a Paddy five-star dive resort on Lembe Island. John is a local man who's been diving the area his whole life. With his mechanic Richard and skipper Yuli, we had the perfect team to explore this unique haven. The season was transitional, so on some days during the month we spent there it rained, while other days were sunny. Of course, once underwater, this didn't matter. It was simply time to discover some of Lembe's exceptional treasures. Like many of us, I have a fascination with octopuses, and the Lembe Strait has some of the best. High on my wish list of critters to find there was the long arm octopus. Our first sighting of this extraordinary animal was heart stopping. As the name suggests, the long arm octopus has elegant long arms in relation to its short body. Like most octopuses, it will mimic its surroundings. If you think this octopus is amazing, keep watching for the most extraordinary of all Lembe's octopuses. Ever since the movie My Octopus Teacher, octopuses have been getting all the glory. But did you know that cuttlefish are even more intelligent? According to National Geographic, their brain-to-body size ratio is among the biggest of all invertebrates. They can count, and they can remember what, where and when they last ate, a memory trait once believed to be unique to humans. Look at this beautiful golden cuttlefish changing not only the colour and pattern of its skin, but the texture too. Pipefish are another of my personal favourites. There are many types like this reddish bentstick pipefish. With its elaborate camouflage, the most delicate pipefish has to be the ornate ghost pipefish, seen here hovering around a feather star. They normally come in twos, but this one's mate was hanging just out of shot. This is the exquisite banded pipefish. Commensal shrimp live in partnership with other creatures, often residing on coral or between the swaying tentacles of anemones. Some make their home on the bodies of animals like moray eels or sea cucumbers. Shrimp are feisty, fearless characters, making them superb subjects for Jamie to photograph. There are thousands of species of shrimp around the world, some less than a centimetre and almost completely transparent, while others are large and powerful. Many have not yet been named or are still to be discovered. If you want colour underwater, then the peacock mantis shrimp will fulfil your dreams. Look at those eyes moving independently of each other and seeing in all directions. 
they can detect hues way outside our puny human colour range. But don't get too close. The peacock mantis shrimp uses its front arms like a boxer, and if threatened will punch you at 75 feet per second. That's 50 times faster than the blink of an eye, or about the same as a 22 calibre bullet. Don't believe us? Check the Guinness World Record for the strongest self-powered strike by an animal. This shrimp mainly uses its punch to catch food by breaking open shells and dismembering crabs and other crustaceans. Here's a tip. Don't put one in your aquarium. They have been known to punch through glass. We've seen orangutan crabs before. They're usually orange and fluffy like the eponymous great ape, but here in Lembe, they have hairless versions. Most crabs have ten legs, but this squat lobster has eight. These busy little animals fall somewhere between crabs and lobsters. We haven't been able to identify this one. Can you? Sailors will be more familiar with seeing flying fish racing away across the waves in front of their boats. This one's a juvenile, taking shelter on the seabed. No underwater photographer worth their sort could pass up the opportunity to go nudibranch hunting. There are over 3,000 named nudibranchs and more turning up regularly. These sea slugs, which of course is what they are really, are colourful little jewels among the black volcanic sand and debris of Lembe. This purple-tipped Janolus is building up quite a sweat. In fact, nudies can move quite quickly when they want to, like this unfairly named gloomy nudibranch. We often see Trions risbeckia in pairs cozing up to each other. Here's a desirable flabellino going for a walk. A juvenile filefish just drifting along with the current. We usually find wasp fishes in pairs, but for some reason this one, who Jamie named Elvis, was sitting on his own, gently swaying in the current. A yellow trumpet fish hides behind a large log accompanied by a dusky batfish. This is the biggest hermit crab we've ever seen. Sitting on the sand, keeping a weather eye on the camera, this white spotted hermit's hermitage is a shell over a foot across. A small shoal of razorfish in the traditional head-down, tail-up position, used as a way to hide among rocks, coral and sea urchins. When we arrived, we were told by another diver that due to the changing season, there were no frogfish currently in Lembe. But on our first dive, we were met at the bottom of our descent by a hairy frogfish. And we continued to spot them throughout our dives, like this startling orange painted frogfish. Frogfish are territorial and some change their colour to suit their surroundings. These unusual sea creatures entice prey with a lure attached to the top of their head. Like most riverside fishing, this slow method of catching dinner 
demands patience and stillness. They don't move around much, but when they do, frogfish prefer to walk rather than swim. They do this by pushing themselves forward on their pectoral fins and using the water's natural buoyancy to bounce along. But they're not the only fish to walk in Lembe. Jamie captured this ungainly scorpion fish displaying a similar style of locomotion, working hard against the current. Here's another walking animal, this time the common seahorse. We were thrilled to spot quite a few of these shy animals, along with the thorny seahorse. Measuring in at less than two centimetres and perfectly camouflaged against the Gorgonian coral they inhabit, we would never have found this tiny pygmy seahorse without John, our incredible guide. This crazy little juvenile dancing about is waiting to grow into a beautiful harlequin sweet lips. There are around 1,250 species of sea cucumber across the planet, and the amber fish is one of the biggest. They've been known to grow to 89 centimetres and weigh up to 5 kilos. Research has shown they can live for several decades. They don't get much love or attention, but sea cucumbers are the earthworms of the sea. Hoovering up the seabed, digesting, sifting and excreting means they are critical for a healthy ocean environment. Their biggest predator? You guessed it, humans. With 16 vulnerable or endangered sea cucumbers already on the IUCN list, including the amberfish's cousin, the pineapple sea cucumber, we wonder how long this beauty will last. The jewel in the Lembe crown, for us at least, is the mimicking miracle octopus, or more simply the mimic octopus, discovered here in 1998. This exquisite animal hides at night, choosing instead to forage in the open seabed during the day. This has meant inventing some ingenious ways to disguise itself. Like all octopuses, it can change its colouring, but the mimic can twist its body into the appearance and behaviour of unappetising creatures like lionfish, jellyfish, sea snakes or crabs. It often burrows into the sand with just its eyes protruding and that was how our talented guide John found this one. The mimic can be confused with the wonderpus, also discovered here. Small differences on the wonderpus, like eyes on stalks and the lack of a white horizontal line along each arm, mean it's best to have a guide with you to make the final decision on what you're actually looking at. The most extraordinary of Lembe's cephalopods is this, the flamboyant cuttlefish. Like the mimic octopus, it's not a nocturnal hunter, preferring to find its food in the daytime. And like several critters here, its walking is more proficient than its swimming. In fact, it can only float or swim for short periods, so has little choice in the matter. There are various reasons for the extreme colour changes, like putting on a mating display or trying to attract prey. But it's more likely that the cuttlefish is indicating its poisonous state to a potential predator, in this case Jamie and his camera. Although deadly poisonous to predators, they are harmless to divers. That's unless you eat one, of course.
So one of the things that we love about Two Fish Dive School is the fish. And I'm not talking about the fish in there, I'm talking about the fish we have for lunch, which is divine. And Uni is just uh, barbecuing it right now. Let's have a look. <laughs> 